Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about some sad orchid news. Yes, unfortunately there are some more kids which I need to let go because they're dead. So let's just go through them because I'm sure at some point um, some of you will ask me whatever happened to that orchid. So here is an update on the orchid that will sadly die. And let's start with this one. This is the Vandaluzonica. I received this one from a viewer um, and she didn't really have any good roots and I tried to keep it hydrated but as you can see she depleted herself there's really nothing to do right here this was a seedling so yeah seedlings really are more fragile than mature orchids I really hoped I could save this one and uh, yeah make it flourish but nope I was unable to so sadly we need to let the Luzonica go Another orchid that we need to let go is the oh, Phalaenopsis tetraspis C1. If you remember, I did some videos on it. It had a stem rot infection. It actually came with it. And I tried to treat it in various ways, but nope. Um, so the problem is that the stem is very, very short. And one of my viewers commented on my opinion that stem rot is um, a worse disease than crown rot. Uh, they commented that it's easy, you just cut the stem and everything's okay. Yeah, you can on Vanda orchids or Phalaenopsis with a huge stem. When it comes to a stem that is, I don't know, about one centimeter long, you cannot really cut anything. Um, not even the crown because there aren't enough joints to produce a cakey. And if the infection is in the middle of the stem, what can you do? What section do you keep? Do you keep the um, incomplete crown? Do you keep the section, the lower section, which again is incomplete? Um, yeah, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to find a cure for stem rot because I see more and more orchids affected by this for whatever reason. She's not the only one that is dying currently of stem rot. I have another piece of very bad news. There you go. This is not a crown rot infection. This is stem rot. It started somewhere here and everything just fell in a matter of days. It was it was so fast I was really unprepared. And again, because I don't necessarily have a good treatment, which is not toxic. I know I can very well use fungicides, but I'm not okay with them. Um, so I did not find a treatment, a safe treatment just yet. Mm, there we go. It's gone. You know who this was? Take a wild guess. I'll give you the answer in three, two, one. Phalaenopsis Kaora chocolate drop. <laughs> the joy. I'm really, really sad about this one. It was so beautiful. She created another bloom, although the flower spike did start to dry off really, really fast after I per I didn't purchase it. I received it. The flowers dropped pretty fast and I thought it was just an acclimation thing. Uh, but no, the infection ate away inside the core and this is the result. Now, if I look at it, I do still have some good roots. I do still have a little, little portion of the stem here. I might just cut the top. I don't know. But the important thing is that I have available eyes and nodes that are able to produce keikis. It's not enough to have a little bit of the stem available. You need to have a portion of the stem that is capable of producing some growth. So I don't know at this point what we'll do. But yeah, this is pretty, pretty sad. So two of my most favorite orchids are gone at the moment. It's the Tetraspa C1. I don't think I'll ever have another C1 and the Kaora Twinkle, which is pretty hard to find. Hmm. So as you can imagine, I'm very happy about the events. And lastly, we have this cat, Leia. She's the BLC uh, Ports of Paradise cross with Fortune Dragon King. This was an orchid I received from one of my viewers and she was doing okay. She produced quite a lot of roots at some point. The roots stopped. They got burned. <laughs> anyway, so they are absorbing water. However, they do not seem to want to grow. Also, the orchid got depleted, as you can see. She's very dehydrated. One of the pseudobulbs is dry in the back there. And this new growth right here, as you can see, is shriveling up. She really is not doing okay. I don't know what will happen to this one. She's receiving water, uh, but it's um, really not looking all that great. I am willing to consider her a loss. Um, pretty bummed. It's a beautiful Calia orchid, but what can you do? So, oh, sorry about that light. <laughs> These were the bad news for today. However, since you guys requested it, I will talk about Milo a little bit. Now, Milo is my parrot, and I do not want to make a habit on making videos with parrots on my channel. 
because this is just my personal thing, I just want to keep my channel focused on what my channel is about. And I know that people expect orchid and plant related videos rather than pets, because this is not what they subscribe for. However, at the end of my videos, I might just show you a little footage about Milo and talk a little bit about it. So you can feel free to skip and to shut down this video right now if you're not interested. Okay, so Milo is a Patagonian conure. We got him about a month ago. So he was about three months then, now he's about four months. He's baby, he's still on formula, although we're weaning off. And I have to say he is a handful, but he's such an adorable handful. Now, I've had parrots for the last 20 years and I know their psychology, so I know what I should have expect. However, this guy's on a totally new level that pretty much challenges me, but we're okay. We're doing a lot of progress, I'm really happy. However, this type of bird is loud. You know how articles say, oh, they can be a little loud? No, they can be very loud. As loud as to actually go to the doctor and check the ear and see if it's okay. That's how loud. However, he pipes down a lot. He got really adjusted to us. He's really a cute bull. However, he needs to be educated and trained and all of that. And that requires a lot of time. However, the reward is wonderful. So anyway, I'm going to show you the good stuff in this video. He's a very, very playful bird. What I love most about him is that he is not an aggressive type. He was hand fed and gotten used to people. He was not afraid of us. Also, he's not an abused parrot, so he doesn't have any reason to fear humans or to be aggressive to humans. So that was um, a good start part of the reason why I really wanted him. However, my major, major stress these days is how we kind of didn't take into account his measurements. Now, we bought a cage that by all means is not tiny. However, it is not wide and his tail is pretty long. We kind of underestimated that. We never saw him in this cage that we have when we purchased him. By my eye, it looked okay. It turns out was not okay. So I need to buy him a new cage, a suitable cage. Problem is suitable cages and really worthwhile cages are so expensive. So I have the cage of my dreams. I cannot seem to order it. I know how to decorate it. I know what I want to do with it. I think it will be great for him. And because I will spend as much money, I want the cage to be functional as well. So it has the seed catchers, it has the good lock because trust me, this guy will learn how to unlock his cage unless it's a good lock on it. Anyway, a lot of benefits and a lot of functionality and it's a sturdy cage, it's well built. So if I will invest in that cage, I want it to be functional and I want to keep it for as long as Milo will live. He doesn't stay in the cage most of his time, he stays outside because most of the time I am with him. However, if I leave the room, he goes and explores and sometimes he might explore cables and that's not okay. So until he learns his boundaries, you know, I need to keep him in his cage. Now I put toys in his cage and all of that. However, because the cage is not wide enough, I cannot do what I want. Being that he's a baby, he is kind of clumsy still and I'm afraid he's gonna get hurt if I go crazy with toys and perches and all of that. So I cannot really do that. Also, there is one single soft spot or sweet spot in the cage where his tail is okay, comfortable, but that's it. And that doesn't really let me place any more perches to go up and just explore the cage. So pretty much, I'm very, very, very stressed by this at the, at the moment because I see that he gets bored, even though I don't let him alone for a long time. He plays with the toys that I give him and then at some point he gets bored and I understand this and it kind of stresses me. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I didn't know. No, hope you enjoyed the Milo part of the video. I did not enjoy uh, my dead orchids. <laughs> but yeah, that has to happen as well. So before I let you go, please take a moment to rate this video below with a like or a dislike. A share would be fabulous. These things really help my channel grow and keep me going and making more videos and doing what I like. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plants videos videos and always feel free to leave me a comment down below if you have questions about orchids or suggestions for videos i always read my comments and you can also choose an option on the screen if you want to watch another orchid video or visit orchidnature.com thank you for watching i'll see you all next time bye